In case you ever find yourself in the wild in freezing temperatures without shelter, trash inside your pocket might save your life. That gum you've been carrying around for months has a foil wrapper, which is going to be your first tool to start a fire. The second tool you need is a battery. It must be in that flashlight you happen to have or some other gadget. You're going to need to cut a narrow bridge out of the wrapper. If it's any thinner, it might break without serving its purpose. One wrapper should be enough to make three igniters. Put on your gloves, this contraption is going to get really hot really soon. If you drop it, you'll lose your only source of fire. Attach the gum wrapper to the battery on both ends. Hold it next to some good flammable tinder. If you also have chapstick in your pocket, add some to the fire to make it burn longer. If you get stuck in the snow in your vehicle, kitty litter can come to the rescue. You'll need to shovel as much snow and ice as possible from where your tires pass and then put a good amount of cat litter around and under the tire. After you rock your car back and forth and carefully go from drive to reverse, you should get unstuck without a problem. In case you don't have a car or a tent at your disposal, you can arrange yourself a nice and warm sleeping area right in the snow. If you're stranded somewhere in the mountains, don't crash in a clearing. Avalanches are more likely to pass here. Find some accumulated debris and broken tree stumps at the base of the clearing and set camp there. To remove snow faster and easier, cut it with a knife or a sharp branch. You're going to be working with the crusty ice layer and going in blocks and not handfuls to save time and energy. Try clearing a section roughly as large as a king-size mattress. You won't be able to survive on ice-cold ground, so once you reach the soil, you'll need to thaw it. Pick enough wood to start a huge fire. You'll need it to burn for hours to keep you warm. If there are pine trees around you, you'll easily find fat wood. It's dried wood that's full of pine sap. You can start a fire on the tree stump using the method you already know. The resin will burn for days. It can also double as a signal fire for those looking for you. Don't feel like digging a shelter in the snow? Bullrush can help you out. It's hollow and it floats and can easily be shaped into whatever you need it to be. Snow bends it down and you can build your human nest inside it without any tools. Once you form the tunnel, bring some dry grass to insulate it. Get plenty of it to build strong and thick walls. Add more grass to the roof and don't forget to make a grass door and leave an opening to ventilate your shelter. Poke small holes in the ceiling and in the door. When you're about to leave the house for the wilderness in the winter, don't wear cotton clothes or socks. Cotton holds moisture like a champ and loses all of its insulating properties. So, if you sweat or get soaked from the snow, cotton will make you feel even colder. Put on several layers of synthetic clothes instead, with a waterproof outer layer. Long underwear can also count as a layer. Choose woolen socks because they will suspend the moisture in the weave. If you don't have any, you can put on regular socks and plastic bags on top of them. No matter how tempting it looks, don't eat ice or snow. It can give you dehydration as your body will need more energy to heat up and melt snow than receive from consuming it. Put some snow or ice in a bottle and between your sweater and the upper layer of clothes. Your body heat will slowly but surely turn it into a liquid. To speed things up, put snow in a bucket or pot and thaw it above your fire. You can make some pine needle tea if you collect enough of those and drop them in freshly boiled water. This drink will be packed with vitamins and antioxidants, just what your immune system needs to survive. You can make a rope for binding parts of your shelter or securing food when cooking out of pine roots. Use a stick to dig them out of the frozen ground and separate them. Split the root in two and pull the ends away from each other. This rope won't burn in your hot fire, unlike synthetic ones. To warm up the cold winter bed in your home, fill a bottle with hot water and place it in your core region under the cover. That's right, not in the toes area. The water will heat your vital fluids traveling through your body, reaching all the extremities and warming you up in no time. Avoid metal bottles so you don't burn yourself. 
And don't forget to crank down the lid so you don't wake up wet. You can also wrap your pajamas around the bottle before putting them on for an extra effect. That bubble wrap you were keeping in your house for months for anti-stress purposes can serve as an excellent insulation material. Spray some water onto your window and push the flat side of the wrap against it. It will now stay up and keep the heat from escaping your room and your electricity bill from growing out of proportion. If you don't have any bubble wrap at home, try asking at the furniture store if they can give you some for free. To warm up quickly when you wake up, set a timer on your coffee maker for 15 minutes before you wake up. You can also try preparing hot chocolate, oatmeal, or soup the same way. Just put the ingredients in the filter instead of coffee. If you have a thermostat in your building that's locked and won't let you crank up the heat, you can try tricking it. This appliance knows if it's cold or warm enough based on the temperature around it. So, put some ice near it and it will feel like it's colder in your room than it actually is. Just don't put ice cubes directly on the thermostat. In case you plan your outfits for the next day, you can put those clothes in your dresser and add an electric blanket on top. Turn it on the second you wake up. Your outfit will be warm when you put it on as if it just came out of the dryer. Your toilet seat will also feel warm and nice if you put socks on it. When the news tells you there's a huge storm coming and power outages are highly likely, fill your bathtub with water. If you have an electric water pump, it won't work and you'll run out of water soon. Since gas stations also run on electricity, fill your car tank before the storm hits to have some emergency gas. Once the storm hits and you're locked in, put on several layers of warm clothes. Thermal wear, a warm shirt, a sweater, insulated pants, and woolen socks. Don't forget mittens so the heat doesn't escape through your hands. Hang dark blankets on your windows to draw in heat. Make sure your doors and windows are closed well and put some towels under them to prevent drafts. Your basement is probably more insulated by the ground, so it could be a good place to spend the night. When the power comes back on, Check all your appliances and electronics before turning on the main power switch. They must be unplugged to avoid power surge damage. As you turn the water supply back on, keep the taps on the lowest level of your house closed to let the air out from the upper taps. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.